Good evening, friends, and welcome to the second series of the Web Edu, which we tried to do live uh, webinars for the various collections which we as collectors do in the group of the Hobby Club. Uh, I will try to, during this presentation today, give you some insight on the German hyperinflation uh, situation as well as the, the bank notes related to that. I would now start my presentation. Um, a little about me, I am based in Bombay, having my own business, uh, which is related with agencies from companies from Europe. Uh, as a hobby, I am a collector of banknotes and coins from the year 2013, and also being member with the reputed IBNS group, as well as different groups like THC, OFB, and Collecting Histories. These are all various collectors whom we interact and share knowledge with each other. Uh, coming to THC, THC is the hobby club. This is a group of around 60 collectors collecting different types of collectibles. And the main aim of this group is to impart knowledge of various collections to the other collectors and also we are now taking a step wherein we are imparting these knowledge and information to the general public also. Coming to my collection. My collections, I started with the Republic banknotes, uh, which are banknotes after the independence. Then added the Indian British banknotes and finally expanded into the private bank banks, uh, banknotes, and then moved on to the world banknotes. The present themes which I work with are the hyperinflation banknotes, which has all the banknotes with a denomination of 50,000 plus, overprint banknotes, odd denomination banknotes, notes and coins on odd materials, uncut banknote sheets, uh, pre-1900, and the private banknotes. Uh, the hyperinflation collection of mine, I started in the year 2015 after I was fascinated by the number of zeros which were there on banknotes of various countries. Uh, since then, I have been able to collect over 4,000 different banknotes in this collection from about 50 countries. Before this live presentation or the webinar which I'm giving today, I had three of them during this year under the Web Edu series number one. The first one was on hyperinflation banknotes on 16th of May, which had a viewership till now of 1762. The second one was of overprint banknotes on the 1st of August and has a viewership of about 736. And the last one was on 19th of September, which was the last webinar in the series one, which was on the offbeat world bank notes, which has a viewership of 535. Uh, during the process of my collections, I had displays and exhibitions done of my collection, which gives an insight to the various collectors on the different banknotes of the series. I have been honored by various awards during this process for my contribution towards the numismatic field and my collections. I have also authored an hyperinflation banknotes uh, a book, as well as given presentations on various collections which I do. Coming to this topic of hyperinflation, what is hyperinflation? We all know what inflation is, but if the inflation reaches a level of 50% a month for at least one month, then that is the threshold at which the inflation becomes an hyperinflation. 
the effects of this is the prices of goods goes up the currency of the country where hyperinflation is existing devalues and the people starts getting products at much higher prices so they get less products for the money which they spend the banknotes in this situation loses its value and so the public start using it to make dresses use it as wallpapers gives it to the kids to use for playing with it now the topic of today the german hyperinflation uh the world war 1 ended in 1918 and since then there were effects of the war and the government debts was always on the rise and in 1919 there was a treaty signed where germany had to pay a total reparations of 132 billion gold marks in three installments the first two installment were compulsory and had to be paid and the third was to be evaluated whether the situation financially is good enough for germany to make the third installment uh the <coughs> germany started making payment but later part of 1922 they started to default and they were unable to pay the second installment during that period then france and belgium sent in their troops and occupied various important installations like steel factory railways etc in germany uh to put pressure on germany to make the payment germany then requested their workers to have what is known as passive resistance to this situation but they failed to make payments to the workers and also to the other workers in the rest of the country which were on strike so they had to print extra currencies to make payments to these workers and that is when the the number the uh, currencies which were printed started multiplying several folds this led to the hyperinflation situation in germany the period of the hyperinflation was from august 1922 to december 1923 the highest inflation rate was in october 1923 this dates or this information has been got from professor steve hanke who is a professor of applied economics at john hopkins university in usa and he is a world leader in hyperinflation giving an example now about the inflation or the hyperinflation situation in germany when you went to buy a pair of shoes in say 1914 it used to be an average cost of 10 deutsche mark in 1922 it reached a level of 1400 deutsche mark but later part of 1923 it became 30 trillion deutsche mark for a pair of shoes coming to 1 ounce of gold in january 1990 it was 170 deutsche mark and november 5th 1923 it reached a level of 8.7 trillion deutsche marks now coming to the nomenclature of the banknotes 1 million have six zeros and it was known as 1 million 10 and when you go to the next level 10 it it called as 10 million n which has seven zeros 100 million n at eight zeros the next level was milliard n so 1 milliard a had nine zeros which was equivalent to what we call as 1 billion today then 10 million n 
which had 10 zeros and 100 milliadan, which had 11 zeros, which has equivalent to 100 billion in today's times. The next is billion N, which is 1 billion. In Germany, it was known as 1 billion. But in today's time, when you convert it, we, we term it as 1 trillion, which has 12 zeros. One followed by 12 zeros. 10 billion N has 13 zeros and 100 billion N has 14 zeros. The next levels is the higher denominations. Uh, there is no banknotes issued within this range, but these were the terminologies used. 1 billion ad, which had 15 zeros, which is 1,000 trillion. 1 trillion with 18 zeros, and that is equivalent to 1 million trillion. And one Thiliad ad had 21 uh, zeros, one followed by 21 zeros, which is equal to 1 billion trillion in today's time, how we would put it. Uh, now I would come to showing you the various bank notes which I have in my collection in these series. Uh, I will have it in the ascending orders. All these banknotes which have been shown in this presentation are from my collection. Ones which is not in for my collection has been uh, specified clearly in, in the presentation which follows. The first range which I am showing you is the 100,000 marks. This is a very special note if you see which is a handwritten note. This is 100,000 marks. This is also 100,000 marks. This is 200,000 marks. This is all, if you see, major of them are in the year 1923. Another 200,000 marks. 200,000 marks. This is 250,000 marks which is an overprint on a 250 mark banknote. Because of the hyperinflation, they didn't have time enough to print new banknotes. So they used the old banknotes and overprinted it and shown it, converted that or upgraded that to 250,000 marks. Another 250,000 marks. This is 300,000 marks. 500,000, another 500,000. This is on a 1,000 Deutschmark banknote uh, overprinted to 500,000 marks. Now we come into the million in range, which is the millions of today's times also. Half a million mark. This is 1 million mark, and this is on silver foil this is another 1 million mark these are known as check the check note guild these are currencies but the format of the currency is like a check it is an handwritten note and hand signed this is 1 million means it's 1 million Zwei million in, which is 2 million. This is also 2 million marks. Another 2 million. This is 3 million marks. This is dry million in, means 3 million marks. Four million in, it's 5 million marks. This is another 5 million marks. This is also another... Uh, Check note guild of 5 million marks. Zen million N, which is, means it is 10 million. This is 10 million marks. Again, a check note guild. Over here, you see you have handwritten and also stamped. This is 10 million N again. This is another 
check note guild where you see it is all printed but it is hand signed this is 10 million this is zonzing million n which is 20 million marks this is another 20 million this is 25 million this is 50 million this is another 50 million this is a very special note which i got it's not in my collection but i got the image from notegill.com this is a 50 million in mark banknote issued to be used only within the hamburg prison it cannot be used out of the prison this is 100 million in this is another 100 million in this is 200 million in 200 again 300 million in this is 300 million and again a check note guild this is also a check note guild in a very different format <clears throat> this is 500 million in this is 500 million in a check note guild where it is all printed but hand signed this is also a 500 million in all printed and it's rubber stamped signatures now we come to million and mark series which would be equivalent to the billion range which we have today this i million and which means uh, uh, equal to 1 billion in today's times this is again a uh, check uh, note guild this is 2 million n this is of a 10 million n uh, banknote on which it is overprinted 3 million n mark this is a very typical special note which is typed note if you see it is not printed and hand signed this is 5 million n this is another 5 million in. This is 10 million in. This is a 10 million in uh, check note guild. Uh, the similar one, but from a different bank. This is again 10 million in. This is a very special note, which is a very odd denomination, which is 15 million in which is overprinted on a 200,000 mark banknote. This is 20 billion in. This is 20 billion in. This is also a typed banknote. This is also 20. This is also 20 million in. This is 25 million in. This is 30 million in. This is 50 million in. This is 80 million dent mark, which is a very, this is a very odd denomination. This is 100, 100 million in. Similarly, 100 million in. This is 100 million in. Similarly, this is 200 million in. Another 200 million in. This also is a 200 million in. This is 500 million in. This is another 500 million in. This also is 500 million in. Now we come to the billion in mark range, which in today's time we would treat it as a trillion marks. This is ein billion, ein billion, that means 1 billion. And if you would see, it's written 1000 million in. This is 2 billion in. This is 3 billion in. 5 billion in. That's 5. This is another 5 million in. This is a 5 billion in. This is 10 billion in. This is another 10 million in. This is 10 million in. This is 50 million in. 
another 50 billion in. This is 200 billion in, which is not part of my collection. Again, I got this image from notegale.com. This happens to be the highest denomination German bank note issued as per my knowledge, which I have. Now, this ends the various pictures, which has been this thing, trying to again show you the collections which I do uh, on the various banknotes which I collect. I would thank you for being present for this presentation. I have given you my email address here in case you would like to have some more information or you would like to send me some more information on these where I could also get some knowledge from your side. I would now wait for any questions from your side to give you answers to whatever I could on these on this presentation. Thank you again for all of you to be present uh, during this presentation. Yes, uh, it did end with Goldmark and finally there's Mac. Yes, but I have not covered shifting on to the next levels. I have only talked about the hyperinflation levels. I hope I could also been buy some good notes. Thanks, Ms. Az. I have tried to show you various banknotes. Uh, in this presentation from my collections. Of course, as I mentioned to you earlier, I have about 4,000 plus banknotes in this range, uh, but tried to show you various types of banknotes, uh, uh, you know, so that you get a little insight about what type of banknotes were issued in Germany during those times. And as mentioned earlier, the hyperinflation period was basically from August 1922 to uh, end of 1923. Yes, these, uh, Suresh, these circulation notes were all over the Germany, but many of them were confined to the city or the town or the village where they were actually issued. So there were different notes which were issued by the local governments or the uh, the German government. So it depends. Uh, many of the notes were only, as mentioned earlier, was only to be utilized within the town or the village which issued that notes. Uh, in 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 most cases, no, Kunal. They were not being accepted in the other state. Maybe some of them, yes, but most of the notes were not. There is a question by Kostub, I can see. Uh, what is the mechanism to stop honoring hyperinflation notes after economy recovers? Uh, normally after an hyperinflation situation coming to, which comes to an almost to an end, most of the government issues a completely different series of banknotes, which replaces 
the old series now different countries takes different approach and works in different manner depends on the situation at their end but then these notes becomes invalid the hyperinflation note becomes invalid and a complete new series starts uh you need to store them in less humid areas and in proper boxes or albums depends how you would like to keep them how do you identify the scope of circulations of these notes uh suresh i am not very clear on the question which you have asked is it you want to know where it is valid uh, or it is the quantity of circulation i am not very clear on your question uh rishab how much you have 100000 marks notes uh i am sorry i have not calculated uh, the bank notes of uh, as per denominations like which denominations how many notes i have unfortunately i don't have the count of that um suresh i see what you have asked where it is valid if you see the bank notes uh which are issued normally they are is they write the name of the city or the area on the bank note it's not written as germany or it's not written as a name of the country it's ma mentioned basically the city or the town or the zone so what is mentioned on the note it is only in that area that the bank note is valid i hope i have been able to give you the answer suresh even if you have questions or an afterthought uh, queries i have given you my email address which is anishdmehta@gmail.com you are free to send me an email and i will try to send you as much information as possible there is a question of minas how easy or difficult it is to add these hyperinflation banknotes in one's collection um, some of the notes are very easily available uh, from various dealers and various uh, exhibitions and auctions and all but there are a lot of notes which are very difficult to get uh, so which is in any sorts of collection which you do some may be very easy and some may be very difficult but if you want to try to add on to a larger quantity it's definitely gets difficult as you start uh, adding more and more is any note with overprint of higher value i have shown in my presentation two or three notes uh, of lower denomination which has been overprinted with a much higher value and there are several of them in the uh, the german uh, hyperinflation time uh we have almost reached or i think we have reached the 30 minutes uh i would thank all of you once again for being present in this presentation and hope that i could pass on uh some information to you on the german hyperinflation situation and their banknotes um uh, we have uh 
the the THC series, which is Web Edu 2. And we request you to please subscribe to this uh, channel on the YouTube because we would have the series 3, 4, which may, may be not live, but it may be offline. And if you're subscribed, you would get information about the various uh, videos and data which we will upload, which could be useful to you for various collections. Uh, we also request you that if you like this presentation of mine, please give a like to this presentation. And we hope that you attend the other nine more uh, live webinars which we have in this series. Uh, in case you want uh, information on that, please get in touch with us and we will give. But it would be on every Saturday from now for the next nine more Saturdays at the same time which you had today. And these are all on various different type of collection and just not banknotes. Thank you very much again and hope that I was able to give you some information and thank you again for attending this presentation. Thank you all of you.